um, a gain of 44 axle. So this applies to Dodge trucks from 77 to 93 that have a gain of 44 front axle. Um, also Ford or Chevy, anybody that has a gain of 44 front axle in their truck. Um, so things that you will need to, uh, to do this um, are just some basic tools. One uh, special tool you will need though is this guy right here. And this tool is used to remove the uh, lock nut that is on the spindle. And without this tool or one similar to it, you won't be able to get the job done. Now I'd recommend getting the strongest one you can find because even though this says not for impact use, I had to use an impact gun on it to get that fucker off. I will show you guys how to take this wheel hub apart um, and remove the axle so that you have access to the ball joints if you need to do the ball joints or the seals or the wheel bearings. Okay, my camera tripod just broke. So this uh, will be interesting. So you start off by taking this little grease hub off here and it just just have to pound it off with a chunk of wood or something. This will be a common theme throughout this procedure. Beating things with chunks of wood. And also our friend penetrating oil. Whenever things get stuck, and in fact if you anticipate that something's going to get stuck, just throw penetrating oil on it. getting there. The other side was easier to take off. It's starting to move though. I should probably find a better piece of wood. This I just can't get in there. We're getting there. Okay, gee whiz. Yeah, this one's in here a lot better than the other one, so... Yeah. Sweet. Grease cap. Gone. And, uh, have a place for your stuff. Like that bucket right there. As things get removed. There's a little snap ring in there. And uh, this holds the four-wheel drive gear in. So you just take that out. This is like the easiest part. Snap ring. And then um, you grab like a mechanics pick or a screwdriver. Um, I do have a screwdriver with a funky end. Look at that. There we go. And literally just a gear that slides out. Now the next thing is a bit of a pain in the ass. If you look inside of here, you can see there's a uh, lock nut on there. And if it's anything like the other one, it's tight as fuck. And I'm probably gonna have to, to use an impact wrench to remove it, which I don't like to do, but the tool might break. That's the only problem <laughs> if we do that. But uh, I don't really see any other way to get it done. That's the way I got it done last time. Let's just hope the tool holds up. Because if anything breaks, it's gonna be the fucking tool. And I've got this thing on the strongest setting, so. It takes a lot. Not for impact use fucks the tool up a little bit when you do that. So take this lock nut off the spindle. The next thing to come out is another little funky, it's just a, it's a lock for the, for the adjustment. Oops. Yep, there's that. 
Now this has a key on it, so it only goes on one way, and it locks onto a pin. So when you tighten this, you gotta line it up with this guy right here. And then there's one more ring, uh, lock washer. It's not a lock washer, it's an adjustment washer. Adjustment nut. It uses the same tool. Um, this time, however, I ought to be able to use just a regular half inch wrench to get it out. So much easier. I'm going to leave that on the end of the threads for right now and take the brake caliper off. These bolts here are being removed. Oy. So once you take these off, that will allow um, these guys to kind of slide out of place here, just like that. So you can change brake pads on these things really easily. You don't have to take the brake lines apart much at all. It's just super, super quick and the calipers and the pads slide out intact. I'm just gonna set it on top of the drag link right now. So you can see that right there. I really ought to replace those brake lines. I think I'm gonna go ahead and order a kit and replace those since I'm doing master cylinder and I redid the drums back there, new parking brake. And the only thing that part of the brakes that was good was the pads in the front and that's it. <laughs> so once you have that off, um, then you can, I'm going to go ahead and put this back just because I don't want to lose any parts. Take this last adjustment ring out of here. This is literally what holds your wheel on. And you can see that once now, now that this is loose, that uh, wheel hub moves around super easily. And so there's a little tab on there, and that's uh, what holds everything in place. Keeps it from spinning around, coming loose. It's a pretty good design. And uh, after that, you should be able to just pull everything off. Now there's a bearing right there. You can see there's that's the uh, outer wheel bearing that's next. It will likely want to come out. So you can see this is a roller, uh, tapered roller bearing. There's all kinds of hair and shit in here. And you know, it just kind of sits in there. And there's a preload on it, obviously. So when you go to put this back in here, there'll be a certain preload on that uh, one piece. It's not like that bad. It's like setting the preload on any other thing, like even a bicycle or something, you know? So I'm gonna take that out. May replace those bearings. That's one wheel bearing. The other one's in there, and the only way to remove it is to take the seal out from the other side, which is right here. Oh, nice. We just got a bunch of shit in there. Uh, kind of want to avoid that. Taking the spindle off. But I'm going to clean this up first. Wipe all the grease off of it. So there's only one way to get this stupid thing off of here, and that is to... Um, just beat the shit out of it. After you take the bolts out, of course. Nine sixteenths. Yeah. Good old nine sixteenths. And uh, I'm gonna cheat. Good lord. Okay. Full disclosure. Even my impact tools don't have enough torque to break these. Now, if this is anything like the other one, it's going to be a bitch. Ugh, maybe even more of a bitch. Damn. Yep, I got a feeling. Well, this one wasn't too bad.
That's not good. Might have to tack weld that fucking thing in the back. I don't have a welder. What the hell am I talking about? have the sixth one here. I've got five of them. This bastard is just spinning, if I'm uh, not mistaken here. Not spins, but it doesn't move. And I thought it was just the, uh, the stud, but well, it is the stud. It's stripped right underneath there, so it can't go anywhere. Oh, it's always something, man. I think I know what the fuck to do. And I'm like, yeah, I got this. And then some shit like this happens. Like, what the fuck, dude? What do I need to do? Heat it up? Would that help? I'm gonna, I'm gonna heat it up. Fuck it. Heating it up didn't seem to do shit. Usually when this happens, uh, it's the stud that is spinning inside of the assembly. That's not the case. It's the nut spinning over the threads and not catching any other new threads. I don't know. I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to kill it. I mean, I figure I'm gonna have to just destroy it to get it out. Now well, let's see what it does if I try to turn it with a wrench. Oh, look at that, I just melted a hole in the plastic there. That was funny. Oh, yeah, look at that, now it's gonna come off no problem, huh? Son of a bitch still doesn't want to fucking move off of here. Hey, it worked. Look at that. It actually caught a thread. And I might even be able to reuse the stud, but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> we fucked that up pretty good. Um, and then there's that. And then we can take this off. A stone. Okay, now the fun part. Uh, now that we have all the bolts off of here, this thing needs to come off. And as you can see, it doesn't readily just pop off of there. And uh, we're going to want plenty of penetrating oil all the way around it, just soaked everywhere. And we're just going to beat the shit out of this thing. Get this here 2x4 until it comes loose. There it goes. Smacking the shit out of it until you break your board where it comes out. Ow! Try not to hit the threads. And there we go. And then you got your needle bearing in there. There's another seal in there. These are good, I suspect. And now we can take uh, the rest of it out. Turn my steering wheel back. There we go. And then it just comes right out. And there you go. One fucking drive axle. 
Now this drive axle is actually a little different than the other one and it's got a bunch of shit in the bottom of the axle housing there. That's all right though. Um, so this is the seal that I was talking about. Oh, yeah, that needs to be replaced. But kiddos, that's all I'm gonna do today. Um, that's all I got time for today. So, uh, but that's how you take everything apart. Pretty much pull the axle out. It is a bitch, I will tell you that. And you can probably tell just by the amount of cussing I did. So yeah, that's it. So let me take you to the parts shelf. Get them all cleaned up.